Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and as uh, you might know, I recently took a trip out to Europe, uh, specifically I went out to Ireland, and I already did a video showing you guys a bunch of my uh, Irish pickups, but there was actually one store uh, called The Rage, which is this store, that I thought uh, actually should get its own video. So like, right outside the store, they have all these bins, these are what they call the, tur the two euro bins, like everything in there is just two euro, flat, regardless of what it is. Uh, and a lot of the time, to be honest with you, they'll just kind of throw it in for free. So I'm going to do a little store tour here. And this caught my eye right away. This is one of those Tech Toy Brazilian uh, Master Systems. Uh, I'd never actually seen one of those in person, so that was really cool. Then they had this big box of uh, all sorts of third-party controllers, which I thought was neat, because a lot of them were European controllers, obviously, and I had never seen them before. Uh, of course, then we got a big selection of Sega Saturn stuff. Uh, they didn't have the one I'm looking for, which is not surprising because the one I'm looking for is hard. Uh, then, of course, uh, a bunch of OG Xbox, which uh, I was very much looking for. Uh, problem with OG Xbox, though, is that it doesn't sell very well over there, so they told me they they throw a lot of it out. And unfortunately, the, the ones I want are the ones you would throw out for the most part because they're just like the exclusive sports titles. But yeah, there's Mega Drive there, which aka Genesis in North America, uh, boxed and loose cart. On the right there, you got a nice supply of uh, Dreamcast games. Of course, you got both Shenmue 1 and 2. Uh, Evil Twin is an exclusive that they had. Uh, now, I completed my Dreamcast collection years ago, but in case anybody is uh, interested, those are some of the exclusive titles from uh, Europe. Evil Twin is very hard to find now. Uh, it's interesting going back and looking at all those, because uh, when I got them, nobody cared about them. But now, some of them are hard to find. Uh, so then we got GameCube. As you can see, it's different than our spines. Uh, the GameCube uh, logo is in the opposite side of the case. Uh, there wasn't much in the way of exclusives uh, in Europe for the GameCube. Uh, there's only one that I'm even totally aware of. It's this one, Doshin the Giant, which originally was a Nintendo 64 DD game uh, in Japan. But on the GameCube, uh, it, it only came out in Europe. And then there might have been a Japanese release. I'm not sure. Uh, so there's some Wii and uh, Nintendo DS. Uh, I wasn't really looking for uh, any games for that, but also they had, uh, you know, boxed consoles up there, and the Zapper, and, you know, the other thing that's cool is that you get to see, like, alternate variants of artwork and stuff. Like, even stuff, you know, I, I picked up here, you know, at home, uh, that I never think to look for. If I see it there, and I might catch it and be like, oh, well, that's cool. It had, like, totally different artwork. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it's cool to see stuff like that. Uh, Nintendo 64 stuff in the box, Nintendo 64 loose cards. One thing they did that I really liked is uh, they included those like hard uh, Nintendo 64 plastic like uh, cases that uh, you can hold the games in. Those are um, like basically protection cases. And then they put a, like a label on it so you can see what game it is really easily. Uh, of course, a nice supply of Dreamcast uh, titles there. Uh, DCX was in there, uh, which is an import disc. Uh, so I guess they know their crowd. Because uh, they also had a lot of imports, or what they would consider imports, you know, North American stuff. Uh, a lot of Master System stuff, as you saw a moment ago, Super Nintendo stuff. Uh, Master System is an easy one to import because it's region-free, and they had a ton of games we never had. SNES, not so much, uh, because the it's shaped like a Super Famicom cartridge, but it doesn't work here. Uh, then, of course, they had a bunch of PlayStation 3 stuff, um, North American stuff seated in there, and a little bit of Japanese stuff seated in there, too, actually. Um, here's more Super Nintendo. Like I said, it looks like Super Famicom carts, but te from a technical standpoint, it's not the same. They do have some North American cartridges, you might have noticed in there. Uh, there's the House of the Dead uh, light gun set, which is kind of neat because the official light gun uh, never came out in North America. Uh, it only came out in Japan and Europe, and that's uh, that was it up there. Although I already have that. Uh, NES cartridges. Uh, there was like, I want to say something like 40 NES games that Europe got that we never did. Uh, and they had one of them. It was like a Konami soccer game, but I, I didn't pick it up. Uh, PS1 stuff, uh, a lot of that. Uh, as well as uh, PS2 stuff. I, I don't even think you could find a game store in Europe that doesn't have PS2 stuff, man. It is so prevalent there. It's insane. But yeah, lots and lots of that. More PS1 stuff down at the bottom here. Very cool. Uh, and then they sell vinyl records too. And there's a lot of them to the left, but I can't really. I just kind of get a quick glance there. That guy who you might have saw his hand for a second was just a shopper, and he was not. He you could tell he really didn't want to be on camera, so I didn't put any pressure on him. Uh, Neo Geo AES cartridges, various Game Boy cartridges. 
uh, in the box too, which is kind of nice. I sh oh, I, I didn't. There's a Ghostbusters game for Game Boy Color that only came out in Europe. I didn't know about it until I got back. Otherwise, I, I would have asked them about it. Uh, oh well. Uh, but yeah, definitely cool. And uh, they have a, a PSP section here. PSP section, I, you know, I don't really collect PSP, so I don't know what's available in the way of exclusives for that. But uh, yeah, nevertheless, it's cool. See this? I thought this was artwork. Like these were all broken cartridges. They just kind of kept out, and that you know, it was like a table display. But no, those are actually like some of the high-end games, and they just keep them there most easily accessible if you're interested, which I think is neat. And they were just saying like, oh, come here, take a look at some of our new inventory. That's what some of that was. And then they let me come behind the counter. Uh, and just look at some of the more uh, rare items. Uh, so they had like some 32x stuff. The European 32x stuff is really hard to find. Just noticing now they had a North American copy of Calibri for the 32x. Um, Dreamcast copies, of course, of Shenmue 1 and 2, Christmas Nights, uh, all sorts of random stuff. Uh, Sega promotional videotapes, VHSs, uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day cards. Uh, all sorts of just random stuff there. King of Fighters 95 uh, for the Saturn, which only came out in Japan and Europe. Um, yeah, and then they had a bunch of consoles, of course, that uh, are on the walls. Of course, for, you know, they, they look good. Uh, it's artwork. I'm guessing those consoles didn't work, and they just kind of used the, uh, the shells. So that's kind of a, a thing I've seen before. Although there was some console up there. I didn't know what the hell that was. They explained it to me, but I already forgot. Sorry. And uh, just various boxes for things like a Commodore 64, which is cool to see. Uh, and uh, yeah, all sorts of Game Boys and all sorts of great stuff that they had in store, in the in stock at the store. Very cool place. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of it on the tour. So now let's go ahead and do pickups. So that was the Rage in Dublin. A really nice store. I ended up going there like four times because it was really close to my hotel. So it really wasn't that hard to get over there. And I would check for new inventory and stuff like that. And obviously I got a bunch of pickups. I actually got way more than you're seeing, but like half of it was like uh, PS2 games that my, my girlfriend ended up getting. Um, so, but I, I did get a few things for myself and I'll show them to you now. This is probably the most worthwhile one that I got, at least for the PlayStation 2. Uh, and I want to give a, a, sh a shout out to my girlfriend here for being the one to notice this. This is a Shinobito Way of the Ninja. Uh, this was released in Japan and Europe, but North America never saw it. It actually looks like a pretty cool game. A couple of reviews I read said it was actually pretty good, and one of those games it's just a shame that we never got. Um, I, so I, this was not actually on my list of things. Like I had no idea this was an exclusive. Uh, basically, you know, my girlfriend was looking through all the PlayStation 2 stuff, and she saw this, and she said, "Do you think this might be an exclusive?" And I was like, "I doubt it, because it looks, you know, not shitty." Um, and <laughs> so I looked it up, and it turns out it was. So. You know, good on her for finding it, so there you go. Um, then I got Virtua Pro Football, because it's, you know, a soccer game by Sega, uh, part of the Virtua series. They gave this to me absolutely for free, uh, as well as this one. City Soccer Challenge, made by good old Phoenix Games. If you're not aware, Phoenix Games is a publisher that only publishes in Europe, primarily just for the PlayStation 2, and they are famous for how terrible their games are. Like, legendary bad. I mean to the point where I don't know how they got past Sony's certification and actually were allowed to release their games, because they are but fuck terrible. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so I got this for free as well. Um, they, like I said, my girlfriend got a ton of PlayStation 2 games, a lot of the Star Wars games, a lot of Lego games, uh, and they gave them, the, gave them to her all for free. Like, they're really nice guys there, really, really cool. Um, but, uh, that, I don't have footage of those, but, uh, yeah, you, you know, Lego Star Wars and Star Wars Force Unleashed, and there was a bunch of them that she got there. But I got a few other games for myself. Uh, of course, you guys know I was on the hunt for OG Xbox, I always am, and while I was there, I thought I wanted to pick up, uh, some of the Xbox exclusives, or at least the regional ones. Uh, because in Europe they had, like, something like 70 of them. I have a bunch already, but, you know, let's chip away at the list some more, right? Uh, unfortunately, in Ireland, I didn't do that well. Uh, I got, uh, and in the previous video, if you saw it, I picked up one. It was, was a sports game. It was uh, Club Football 2005. This one was actually a worthwhile title on the list, and I was very happy to pick it up. It's uh, Taito Legends 2. Now, this game came out in North America, but only on the PlayStation 2. For whatever reason, the Xbox version only came out in Europe. Of course, what it, it's, you know, a compilation disc game. It includes a lot of Taito's classics. You know, I'll read a couple here. Alpine Sky, Curry Kinton, Arabian Magic, The Legend of Cage, Bond's Adventure, Liquid, Sky, Liquid Kids. Uh, that's kind of a weird name. Anyway, so you get it. There's a lot of, a lot of games on there, and that's uh, just a cool release to have. 
Uh, so next up, I actually got an N64 game. This one I was really excited to see. So when I was there, I was in the UK two years ago. And when I was there, I learned there were four PAL exclusive N64 games. I managed to get three of them. And if you're thinking, did you get the fourth one? Not exactly. Uh, so what I found out was when I bought those three, I also bought a fourth game that I thought was the correct game. I got back here and realized it wasn't, so I was missing one. Uh, but then I also found out that there were three additional games that Europe got that we didn't. So, But they came out in Japan as well, so Europe had four totally exclusive N64 games, plus three that Japan also got for a total of seven that North America never saw. So I had three of those totally exclusives, but I had zero of those three, you know, uh, quasi-exclusives, but I found one. Rakuga Kids. Uh, the Rage had that, and I picked it up. I was happy to do it. Um, I don't know much about this game, but, uh, yeah, I picked it up just for the ba simple basis that it's a regional, essentially a regional ex exclusive. Uh, because unlike the Japanese version, this one would be in English. Sadly, though, uh, because PAL N64 stuff is not cooperative with North American consoles, can't use it on there. But I actually do have a PAL N64, thanks to my buddy Raymond, so I can use this. Um, before I go into the final game, though, I want to show you this. I'm sure you've noticed it already. It's a controller. Uh, they had a big box of controllers in there filled with all sorts of generic third-party controllers, which usually don't get my attention much. Uh, but in this case, uh, I saw a Dreamcast controller right on the top. This one's by a company called Joytech. Uh, now, I never heard of them, probably because they only operate in Europe. So essentially, I got this because it's a third-party European controller I would never see in North America. So that's why. It's just a, it's a cool controller. And if you're wondering why it has extra buttons, uh, it's basically one of those like programmable controllers where you can have, in this case, there's a Z and a C button. So what you do with that, in uh, like for example, in a fighting game, like let's say you know there's a combo of like you know, X, A, X, A, B, Y would make, you know, some sort of fatality in Mortal Kombat Gold or something like that. You could program that combination into just Z or C so that when the time comes, you just hit that and the character just does it. Um, at least that's how it's supposed to work in theory. But uh, there you go, the uh, Joytech black Dreamcast controller. And finally, uh, this game I got off my list. This was on my list, but it was... It wasn't as high on my list as it was my buddy Scott the Canadian, who I'm sure is watching and cursing me out right now. Um, this is Extreme Ghostbusters, the ultimate invasion for the PS1. This is a, an exclusive to Europe, and it's essentially a light gun game. It's, uh, does, it is light gun compatible. Of course, you can't use that with modern televisions, as you know. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's just a cool game to pick up. Now, my friend Scott the Canadian is a massive Ghostbusters super fan. And uh, so he really wanted this game, and I wanted it too, you know, because I'd never had a PS1 regional exclusive before, and this was easily the most interesting one that I knew about. Uh, so I got it at the Rage, fully believing I would find it later uh, in the UK, probably for my buddy Scott, but unfortunately I never saw it again. So Scott, if I'm over there again and I see it, it's all yours, but for now, suck it. So, yeah, I got Extreme Ghostbusters for the PS1. Uh, but, yeah, that's my pickups from uh, The Rage. Uh, I want to thank them again for hooking us up with all that, all these, like, free games. They also gave us a free tote bag and everything. My girlfriend has it, though, and she uses it for uh, grocery shopping, basically, which is really cool. So, uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.